Hello everyone. Self-control, the one thing keeping us from playing video games instead of doing homework, eating candy instead of healthy food, and insert pleasurable thing here instead of insert not pleasurable thing here. Some people have greater self-control than others. Why is this important? Well, it turns out that self-control is a commonly shared characteristic of successful people. Side note, there are many different ways to define success, and no two ways are the same. But for the sake of a simple argument and common definition, we'll assume that success is referring to economic prosperity. Successful people having self-control makes more sense when you think of delayed gratification. Delayed gratification is when you have the ability to ignore a currently available reward and wait for a greater reward that will be available in the future. An example that comes to mind would be spending $10 now or putting $10 in the bank to collect interest and spending it later, assuming the interest rate exceeds inflation. Okay, this is great, but it all sounds very subjective. Where are the facts and studies? I thought you'd never ask. Bring in the marshmallow test, an experiment designed by Walter Michelle and colleagues to study self-control in children. Here's how it goes. A researcher brings a child around the age of four into a quiet room. The researcher tells him, okay, here's a marshmallow. Either you can eat it now, or you can wait for me to leave and come back and I'll bring you another one. Then you'll have two marshmallows. Understand? I'll be right back. The kid then sits alone in the room with just himself, the marshmallow, and his inner demons. Do I eat the marshmallow now, or do I wait and get two marshmallows? There are plenty of videos showing exactly how the children occupy their time. Some kids lick their marshmallows, others roll it around on the table, and a few kids even try to take tiny bites from the marshmallow, hoping the researchers won't notice. It is adorable, to say the least, and I'll put links to a few of my favorite videos of this experiment in the description. If you couldn't tell already, the kids who ate the marshmallow before the researcher returned didn't have much self-control, and those who did wait had self-control and a second marshmallow. By delaying gratification, the kids earned more. Michelle analyzed the children from his original marshmallow test years after the test was performed and found some interesting results. Those who exemplified more self-control were doing better at school and coping with stress very well. They also had lower levels of substance abuse, greater social skills, and higher SAT scores. To put it simply, these kids were showing a correlation between self-control and success. Not only that, but they are showing that delayed gratification patterns can be seen from a young age and can predict one's success in the future. So, given what we've seen so far, it seems pretty clear-cut that the marshmallow test can basically figure out whether someone will be prosperous in their life. Well, not so fast. This isn't the end of the story. What if there are more variables to this idea? Recently, University of Rochester professors Celeste Kidd, Holly Palmery, and Richard Aslan performed the marshmallow test with an important twist. They wanted to see how environmental reliability could change the results of the task. That is, they were curious to see what would happen if they altered their perceived trustworthiness of the researcher who was giving the marshmallow to the child. Here's how they did it. The researchers would bring the child into the research room where they had some old, worn-down art supplies in a jar on the table for a cup designing activity. The researcher would then explain to the child, either you can use these art supplies now or I can bring you some brand new, cooler art supplies from the back room. The researcher then leaves the child in the room for about two and a half minutes. The child would sit anxiously waiting for these neat new supplies to play with. The researcher would then return empty hands and say, oh, I'm sorry, looks like we didn't have any new art supplies. Let's just use these instead. Once the researcher and the child were done with the art supplies, the researcher would present the child with a sticker. You can either use this small sticker now, or you can wait and I'll get a bunch of bigger stickers for you. Again, they would leave the child with a small sticker for two and a half minutes. The researcher would then come back saying, I'm sorry, looks like we didn't have the big stickers. Let's just use this one instead. Okay, this is a lot to process at one time, so basically all you need to know here is that the researcher is trying to portray themselves as either reliable or unreliable the reliable ones being those who did the exact opposite of what I just described. After the preliminary steps, the researchers performed the marshmallow test on the kids. They found that the children who had the unreliable environment would wait around 3 minutes before eating the marshmallow, while children who had the reliable environment would wait around 12 minutes. This is a huge difference and indicates that the reliability of one's environment matters in these type of strategic situations. More importantly, it shows that self-control may not be the only variable in determining how someone performs in the marshmallow test. If a child doesn't believe they'll get another marshmallow from someone who has proven to be unreliable, they simply won't wait. This calls into question the original marshmallow test results and how self-control and delayed gratification may not be the only factors in play when determining how successful somebody may be. In fact, one might argue that being able to statistically measure how reliable something or someone is could be a great strategy in real-world scenarios. Let's go back to our bank example from before. Maybe you decide that the bank might fail soon and you don't want to lose your money. In this case, delayed gratification wouldn't make sense due to the unreliability of the bank and it would make more sense to spend your $10 now than to wait for some interest that you will never receive. So what's the big takeaway from this video? Well, first of all, no. A marshmallow cannot directly predict your success in life. It can simply measure your self-control when you are very young, and those results have been shown to correlate with certain metrics that we relate to success. Secondly, we have seen how complicated the marshmallow task can get when reliability is added to the experiment. What if there are more variables we are missing that could alter the results of the study that we don't know about yet? Success is not easily defined or predicted, and researchers are still investigating this topic today. In conclusion, don't let a marshmallow fool you into thinking
making it some sort of fortune-telling delicious treat. Sometimes a marshmallow is just a marshmallow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.